she knows that presumably what she's talking about. And in any case, the Aam Aadmi Party has issued a statement on the matter. This is a serious attempt to distract from the real issues facing the nation. The media is often requested by the BJP to serve as a weapon of mass distraction. I would just request you all, don't oblige this. I have absolutely no reason to comment on that lady's tweet. She knows that presumably what she's talking about. And in any case, the Aam Aadmi Party has issued a statement on the matter, which I believe cannot be improved and does not need to be added to. I honestly feel that this is a serious attempt to distract from the real issues facing the nation, which are unemployment at record levels, particularly youth unemployment for those starting work from 19 to 24, it's 45.4 percent, shocking. Mehengai, uh, price rise, which may not be colossal by world standards, as the BJP keeps saying, but which for a price sensitive nation like India, when 80 percent of our families spend more than 70 percent on food, that kind of price rise really hurts them. And I have to say that we have to focus on what touches the lives of ordinary Indians, not on these other issues. The media is often requested by the BJP to serve as a weapon of mass distraction. I would just request you all, don't oblige this. Distraction from the real issues doesn't serve anyone's interest. I would say with some confidence that I'm looking at, at the overall picture in the country with a great deal of self-belief, a great deal of confidence. The reason for this is both in common sense and in the trends we are seeing in the country in the course of the first few phases. When I say common sense, it was already very clear when BJP started talking about Abki Bar, Char So Par, that this was a complete fantasy. That last time in 2019, thanks to the tragedy in Pulwama and the response in Balakot and the conversion of the election, from what should have been a referendum on the economic failures of the first term of Mr. Modi, it became instead a national security election in 2019. And as a result, they maxed out in a number of states. You know that in six states, they won every single seat. In three states, they won all but one seat. In two states, they won all but two seats. And the Congress was certainly uh, given a very, very resounding defeat in 2019. And in all those 11 states, those results are impossible to replicate. And we're already seeing this very clearly. Already by the time Kerala voted in the second phase, the news coming from those districts in the north that had voted was extremely encouraging. That the strongholds of the BJP had shown minimal turnout and significant drop in voting figures, whereas where the Congress candidates and the India Alliance candidates had attracted enthusiasm, the voters were coming out in good numbers. Since then, since Kerala voted on the 26th of April, three more weeks have gone by, three more phases have gone by, and what we are picking up, I must say, is a confirmation of this trend.